my all-time favorite thing possibly is that overselling it the best thing that ever happens at Walt Disney World during Christmas I don't think that's too far I see them friends I can see them and I'm oh my gosh 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 they're here they're here they're here oh my gosh Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I'm here today with a brand new video. Today we are going to be talking about the best of the holidays at Walt Disney World. We're going to be talking about the festival of the holidays over at Epcot. Very merry the brand new Christmas party here at the Magic Kingdom. The decor, the puppets are returning to Animal Kingdom, projections on Tower of Terror. We are going to have so much fun going all over Walt Disney World to give you the best of the holidays. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. It's going to be jolly. Let's do it. best of the holidays video we are going to be starting at the home of christmas at walt disney world main street usa which is all decked out for the holidays per usual but they actually got brand new 50th beautiful gold christmas decorations we're going to go check out also when i walked in the dapper dance were singing christmas music so if that doesn't put you in the holiday spirit i don't know what will i can't help you all right santa's little helper is going to help us name it go for it Zach. i've been practicing all year dirk i think i've got it let's see Dopey, Doc, Sleepy, Starting with this gorgeous multi-story tree. You can see it's been adorned with gold and beautiful majestic ornaments. Even the stockings and the cookies are painted gold and that's again for the 50th. It's so beautiful. And the tree actually got to come up a little bit earlier this year. Normally they don't put it up until the beginning of December because they have to film the holiday special, but they're doing that different this year so we get to enjoy the tree even longer. And I love every single thing about it, even down looking at the base, looking at all the toys and the presents. It is so sweet. You've got the Lily Bell, which is named after Walt's wife for the train. And truly, this is the most magical tree of all time, except for um, the doll from Squid Games is here. But don't worry about it. I will totally win red light, green light. Um, oh, this is just everything. And when you look out from beyond the tree, you have the most glorious view of Main Street. Even on this kind of overcast day, it's absolutely stunning. They've got the beautiful garlands, the beautiful uh, wreaths going down the street. They've got golden candles in them, Mickey-shaped garlands and, and wreaths on some of the light posts. It's just so pretty. It makes you want to cry a little bit. <laughs> I am loving the gold, but does anyone remember when the garland used to go all the way across the street? This was back in the day. They had to change it because of certain parade floats, but does anyone remember when it would go literally all the way across the street with wreaths on it? Please let me know if you know what I'm talking about, but I am loving the gold look that Main Street is serving right now. Now we all know the true meaning of Christmas is presents, which you can find here at the Emporium on Main Street. I'm just kidding, kids. The true meaning of the season is love and family and being around those who inspire you. And to me, that's what the holiday season's all about. But it's also about presents. So let's, without further ado, go check out the holiday merchandise at Walt Disney World this year. There is a lot of seasonal merchandise, as you can imagine. You can find it here at the Emporium, a huge collection. You can find it at World of Disney. You can find it at Creation Shop, any big merchandise shop. You're going to be able to find it. A lot of this is on Shop Disney as well. So without further ado, here's the Christmas merchandise. T-shirt, looks like fudge, candy bars, advent calendar, different t-shirts, stitch hat, pillow, blanket, lounge fly with Christmas snacks, musical tree, ears. Those aren't actually Christmas ears. I'm calling them great white gray, but they're out of the wreath ears. Kid shirt, different kid shirt that I might buy. Magic bands in generic holiday colors. Christmas pins, pop socket, holiday spirit jersey number one. Kids holiday spirit jersey number one. Three wick candle that smells like Walt's Holiday Lodge. Tacky but really beautiful holiday sweater. Holiday cards. Different holiday cards. Keychain. Pluto plush that smells like hot chocolate. Kids fancy sweatshirt. Kids dress. Kids leggings. Hanukkah. Dish towels. A tray. And a mug. And a 
pillow and a blanket, a kid's sweatshirt, kid's cuddly outfit, kid's onesie, kid's nightgown, a long glittery cardigan, yet another t-shirt, an embroidered shirt like my mom wore in the 90s but I'm thinking about buying it for myself now, a very cute mug, adults pajamas, another t-shirt, ornaments that look like Coco, Disney Plus gift cards, the gift that keeps on giving, Coco set, Crocs, sweatshirt number Three, four, we've lost count. Adult pajama pants. Fuzzy socks. Another holiday t-shirt. Another holiday sweatshirt. A 12 days of Christmas advent charm bracelet. But Molly, are there more t-shirts? You bet there are. There's this gray one and this black one. Is there another spirit jersey? Sure is. Looks like that on the back. Pre-packaged holiday Rice Krispies. Please don't buy these. Please go to the confectionery. Dish towels. Table runner. Apron. Tree skirt. Ornament. One of the literal hundreds you can get at Walt Disney World, especially if you go to the Christmas shop, but this is the only one I see right now. A stocking to hang by the chimney with hair. But Molly, what will my dog get for Christmas? Would your dog like a spirit jersey? Perhaps a mat for their bowl? Perhaps dog pajamas might interest you? Disney sweater. But what if I love Christmas and dogs but don't want to give my dog pajamas? But I still want to show everyone I love Christmas and dogs. That's cool. How about this Santa Paws hoodie? these Santa Paws pajama pants in dog and cat. <laughs> wow, that was sure a lot of holiday merchandise. And that wasn't even all of it. They're already sold out of the wreath ears, the Santa Mickey hat, and more. So I highly recommend checking Shop Disney if you want any of that stuff, especially because there are often promo codes this time of year, and there are no promo codes in the Emporium. Would it be Christmas without a Christmas party? No, it would not. And while Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party did not return, Disney launched a new, very similar event called Disney's Very Merriest After Hours. It's a four hour specialty ticketed event. It's very expensive, but very fun. They've got Minnie's Christmas time fireworks. They've got the return of the Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade, a brand new stage show, snow on Main Street, cookies, and more. I did a whole video on just that event that you can check out if you're interested. No, seriously, I know it's really expensive, but I bought another ticket to go with my mom and my husband after going opening night because I had so much fun. Or should I say, so much fun. Another fun thing you can do at the Magic Kingdom all day long, not just at the party, is go on the Jingle Cruise over in Adventureland. They have transformed the Jungle Cruise with a holiday overlay, so the skippers wear hats, they rename the boats to be holiday things, and there's even Christmas decor and presents along the uh, attraction itself in the scenes, and they tell Christmas jokes. It's really fun. One of the most majestic and beloved Christmas traditions is back this year at the Grand Floridian. And of course, I'm talking about the life-size gingerbread house that they build right here in the lobby. The bakers start working on these shingles in the summertime and they build this truly life-size, like literally there's someone in there selling treats gingerbread house every year and this year it's especially decorated because it's got blue and purple and iridescent and gold for the 50th so let's take a look just look at this magnificent beast i mean it is truly outstanding it is massive it is almost two stories tall it has got the beautiful like powdered sugar snow on it and if you start looking at the details on this thing you could look at it for literally hours because all of those flowers are edible, handmade. All of the shingles are edible, handmade. Literally this entire thing is edible and handmade. And it's, it's unbelievable. It's so cool that they do this every year. They didn't do it last year, of course. Um, that was, first year they haven't done it in a very long time. It started in 1999. So I'm so excited that this one is back. I always suggest reading the sign just to get a feel for how much effort and love goes into these things. Um, it has over a thousand pounds of honey, 150, uh, 140 pints of egg whites, 600 pounds of powdered sugar, 700 pounds of chocolate, 800 pounds of flour, 35 pounds of spices, tons of creativity, Disney magic, and pixie dust, which, <laughs> yes, no question about it. It is full of Disney magic and pixie dust. So the gingerbread house store is open um, 9.30 to 9. So if you want to get some of the treats, don't worry, we're going to get some in a second. Um, you can do that again, 9.30 to 9. You cannot park at the Grand Floridian. However, you can park at the Transportation Ticket Center and take the monorail over if you're not visiting here. Um, but, ugh, 
so so gorgeous or of course you can make a dining reservation if you wanted to eat at the Grand Floridian Cafe or um, Citrico's and then you could look at it as well but anyone's welcome to come look at this and isn't it amazing look at the windows look at the detail on the windows of Mickey and Minnie and you've got Princess Tiana I could stare at this for hours and of course along with the giant gingerbread house there are gingerbread treats made by the same bakers that made the house and it's the same recipe that they use to make this incredible building so you can buy gingerbread shingles you can buy gingerbread men mickey shaped gingerbread other treats all from the grand floridian bakery team and i always look forward to it here's a look at some of the treats you can buy um, i love this classic mickey gingerbread they also have some treats from aaron mckenna so those are going to be your plant-based options gluten-friendly options peppermint bark mickey and gingerbread lollipops brownie tree pop bag of gingerbread cookies that's kind of fun half pound bag marzipan marshmallow lollipop with 50 sprinkles no sugar added cookies if you need that gingerbread with dark chocolate you can buy and create your own actually it's pre-made it's not a create. You can buy the signature gingerbread house, $80 if you want. Also, how are you getting that home? Good question. Somebody let me know. Um, you can get a Mickey shaped caramel fudge, gingerbread man, this very cute uh, snowman donut. Those over there at the 50th things are actually ornaments like for your tree, which is really cute. And the sleigh filled with chocolate. You've got this 50th anniversary chocolate um, snow globe here, ginger snap cookie, and ginger spiced caramel corn. Here is my Ho Ho Holiday Haul from the Gingerbread um, House at the Grand Floridian. Couple things, one, this is a brownie pop. This is a returning item, but it's super duper cute and it's got a new look this year and I thought that look was adorable. This is the cutest cookie. It's actually an ornament. Like I thought it was a literal ornament, but it's a cookie ornament. They're hanging on the grand, uh, on the tree house tree house gingerbread house itself and it's made out of the gingerbread that made the house but then it's decorated for the 50th so I thought that was adorable and had to try I had to get something gingerbread obviously and what better than a 50th thing and then this is brand new this year this is gingerbread spiced popcorn it's caramel corn and then it's coated with gingerbread seasonings as well so I was told it tastes like cinnamon toast crunch by the bakery team that was there and they said it's uh mozzing so I can't wait to try that too okay I was wondering why the box for this popcorn was so big and then <laughs> look at it it is a lot of popcorn like this is as big as my head that was twelve dollars which i don't actually think is that expensive for this much popcorn because it's like eight or nine dollars at the caramel shop and you get about this popcorn and this is specially made at the grand for christmas with the gingerbread seasoning so you know what it's Disney, it's Christmas time, it's expensive, but that looks and smells amazing. I also unwrapped my brownie, which looks really good. And very precariously, here's the ornament. So it's really cool. I guess I could hang this on something, but I'm obviously gonna eat it. Let's eat. First up, the brownie. That's a good brownie. It's rich and chocolatey, and it does taste like a Betty Crocker brownie, but like better because the grand team made it. But it's nice and moist and dense and very chocolatey. If you're a chocolate fan, if you're a brownie fan, simple snack, really good, really cute, but it's not as exciting as the other two. Now we will eat this adorable Mickey gingerbread that's so cute, I don't even want to eat it, but I'm going to. Mm. I have to take smaller, more delicate bites because I'm in the grain and the grain is fancy. I was literally so stressed taking videos of this because I was afraid I would drop it off the string and then I made a mess in the grain. It's very good though. When you think gingerbread, a lot of people think sweet cookie, but this is not sweet at all. It definitely got that molassesy ginger spice, not hot spice, but like wintry spices. And it's not super sweet. However, the frosting and the sprinkles make it more sweet. So I actually think this is a really good balance of like classic holiday treat with a little bit of sweetness and it's really good so if you're a gingerbread fan it's kind of fun to get something gingerbread whether it just be the plain shingle the mickey uh the man that is made by this team and is literally also what's making that incredible gingerbread house so i think this is great it's shareable i love that it comes in a reusable bag so i can eat more of this later but if we're going to get one thing here i feel like it needs to be this and last but certainly not least i love popcorn i'm so excited to try this Yeah, I feel really good about this. 
It tastes like cinnamon toast crunch. It's got that cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, plus the caramel from the caramel corn, plus the saltiness of the popcorn, which is why I like caramel corn so much. This one's better than the cookie. Sorry, gingerbread. I'll just be here now for the rest of the day. Another cool detail, if you come look at the back side, not only can you see those shingles, like the Mickey-shaped shingles, you can buy the ornaments, but if you look up at the top, there's two Christmas presents. Those are for Cosmo and Debbie, um, and Cosmo is actually the general manager of the hotel, and Debbie's the proprietor over merchandising, so they put a little Christmas gift to them up at the top of the tree, which is really cute. And over at the Grand Floridian Cafe, they have another little tiny detail that I adore tiny in size not tiny in impressiveness you may know that inside the restaurant here they have displays from the grand floridian bakery team and they always make a tiny version of the gingerbread house so this is a replica of the gingerbread house it even has the little ingredients thing it's got all the beautiful decor it's not iridescent it's the traditional christmas colors but this is a replica of the big one outside here in the restaurant so Oh, so cute. I love that little touch too. And a lot of people don't know they do that. We have made it to Animal Kingdom on our best of the holidays to check out what this park has to offer. Now, until a few years ago, this park did very little this time of year. They decorated a little bit with this gorgeous tree out front, but the lands themselves weren't decorated. They didn't really do any entertainment offerings, and that is not the case anymore. They decorate the entire park. They bring the Tree of Life awake at night with the fun wintry projections. And y'all, my all-time favorite thing possibly, is that overselling it? The best thing that ever happens at Walt Disney World during Christmas? I don't think that's too far. I, I'm willing to go out on a limb here. One of my all time favorite things at Walt Disney World has returned this year and I am literally giddy about seeing it in a few minutes. Look at this spectacular tree. Now every Disney park has an amazing tree, but I gotta get up for this one. It's definitely one of my favorites. It's absolutely stunning with all of the different animal masks inside there. You can see lions and giraffes. Um, and you can also see some of your favorite Disney characters like Jiminy Cricket and the Winnie the Pooh gang down here at the bottom. I adore this tree. Like, just look at this. You've got a Chippendale snow globe over there. You've got Colonel Hattie's March, as well as some of the characters from The Lion King right here illustrated. You've got Turk. You've got some underrated fun characters on this baby. And it is just absolutely gorgeous, especially at night. First up, I hear one of the flotillas coming by as we drive in. It's the, uh, the drummers, and they have got Christmas decor, and they are playing Christmas music! Yes, we love it! I see them friends. I can see them and I'm oh my gosh. 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 They're here. They're here. They're here. Oh my gosh. What am I freaking out? You may be asking. Well, it is the return of the Mary Menagerie. These are the cutest puppets in the whole wide world and they are different winter animals like penguins and seals and foxes and reindeers and you can interact with them and I'm obsessed with them and I'm going to start crying because I love them so much. Just look at these beautiful creatures. You've got mama reindeer here and a baby. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love them so much. Look how cute that seal is. I'm gonna cry. Hi. Hi, can I? Hi. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. I wanna cry. Do you have a name? This is Lucille. Hi, Lucille. That's a great name for you. I think so as well. Can I pet you? Of Hi. <laughs> I've missed. I missed you last year, Lucille. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so cute. I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> They're just amazing. They're absolutely amazing, and these puppeteers are among the most talented people in the world because they bring these animals to life in a way that you you think they're alive. Like Lucille is alive and she's my friend. Plus you have my man out here crushing on the steel drums. This is the greatest thing ever. Look at that angel. 
He's so beautiful. Yeah, you are. You're so cute. Ah, I love you. <laughs> They're dancing! <laughs> they're back, they're back! The birds are here! And the fox! Ah! And the polar bears! So they actually rotate, there's two different groups of them. So the first group that you saw was the reindeer and the seal and the penguins um, and the drummer. And now here comes, oh my gosh, he's making bird noises on his fiddle. Now here come some birds and the polar bears and the fox and y'all. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, the bear is galloping by. Hi, sweet guy. You are so cute. Does he have a name? I haven't quite decided on a name yet. I think you are very handsome. <laughs> yes, you're so cute. Can I pet you? Hi! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gentle. Oh! <laughs> You're so sweet! My dog likes when I scratch his ear. Do you like that? <laughs> the big bear is here too! Hi, Mama Bear! <laughs> you are so cute! Oh my gosh, I love you so much. Can I pet you? Hi! Ah! I love you! You are so beautiful. <laughs> oh yes, bat those eyelashes, girl. <laughs> Hi, how are you? You are so sweet. I I missed you last year. <laughs> Were you just hibernating for a really long time? <laughs> Am I able to pet you? I'll let you smell my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know a lot of Arctic foxes, but you're my favorite. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is my favorite thing. During the holidays, they're, they're magic. These puppeteers are magic. And I'm sorry, I'm being dramatic and crying, but we didn't get them last year, of course, because of the pandemic. And then this year, they announced they were coming back, and I was so excited. But then they're actually like letting you interact with them. I, was, I wasn't sure if they put them up on a stage or something. And... They're just joy, watching kids meet them, watching people meet them, joy. Look at Donald and Daisy wearing their adorable holiday wear. Yeah, Donald, yeah, Daisy, love you. And here he comes, the holliest, jolliest man of the season, Santa. Hi, Santa! Oh, hi, Santa! <laughs> the fun isn't over because Mickey and Minnie are headed down the river now and while they're still on their 50th anniversary float and they still have the 50th decor, they're wearing Christmas outfits too! Hi, Mickey! Hi, Minnie! Yes! Want to make the cutest thing in the world even cuter? Now you can buy your own menagerie puppet. They have a penguin and a polar bear. And the cats aren't told me to get the penguin because you can make its arms move. Um, and then you can use this to interact with the other ones. And it's so cute, your heart might explode. Warning. My brother! Hello, friend! <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Mom. Bye, brothers. Bye. 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 Hi, Bear. Hi, Penguin friend. What's your name? <laughs> um, Arnold. Arnold the Penguin? Yes. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. This is Sunshine. Hi, Sunshine. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for coming to play with us. Yeah, thanks for being here, Sunshine. Bye. I literally just spent like two hours doing nothing but watching the floats and the puppets and playing with Arnold, who I panic named 
when I was asked what his name is, um, but I guess I'm Ginny Weasley because I named him Arnold. Um, but I literally just spent two hours doing nothing but that. So I don't know if that was a great use of my time or an amazing use of my time. First stop on our decor tour around the park. Look at this awesome selfie wall they made. This is normally the Lion King wall, but during the holidays they add the winter animals here and it's absolutely gorgeous. This is right across from Pete Safari if you want to come take a picture here. We've made it to Pandora, the world of Avatar, and I know you're thinking, do they celebrate Christmas in Pandora? Do the Na'vi celebrate Christmas? No, they do not, but the humans do. Some of the humans, anyway. And if you come over to the human section of this land, which is over by Satuli Canteen, you can see that they brought some trinkets from planet Earth to decorate their section of Pandora. So on the big robot guy, there's Christmas lights, there's hanging garlands made out of natural wood and things they might have found around, including some wooden figures of the different characters in Pandora. And by characters, I mean creatures. And then if you look over here near Pangu Pangu, they've got some more garlands, they've got a menorah, they even have a nutcracker that is painted like a Navi. And before you ask, yes, I can name all of the creatures. That's a banshee, obviously an ekron, as the Navi call it. Uh, you may recognize it from Flight of Passage. Uh, that up there, that is a space antelope. That is a space panther. And over here, hard to see a little bit, but he's, he's up on top there, space horse. So yeah, I got this. Arnold and I have made it into Africa, which has decorated beautifully. Again, this part didn't do much decor till 2019. Um, and what I love about the decor is it's very, very themed to each area um, because it is like, now that we're in Africa, the village of Harambe, it is very much like the locals would decorate. So it's a lot of reusable materials. You'll see scraps of fabric, you'll see bottle caps, um, you'll see bicycle uh, wheels and all kinds of things to make the decorations in this land. I absolutely love it. Just look at these incredible wreaths that are made out of things like bottle caps. That one's got an elephant on it. This one up here's got a giraffe on it. If you're coming here in the Christmas times, spend a little bit of time in Animal Kingdom just looking at the decor. Because if you're like me, you'll be amazed. I particularly love these wreaths and garland here outside Bombasa Marketplace. Look at the lion and the leopard masks, as well as how beautiful all of the ornaments are with the different animal prints on them. Obsessed. Love these trees as well that you can tell are made out of old bicycle wheels, garland, metal and they're gorgeous, especially at night. This is already, in my opinion, one of the best themed lands in Walt Disney World with all of the different decor and how they've weathered everything to make it look old and rusted things. Look at this garland, it's made out of, look at this hand carved gourd with the elephant on it. It's just incredible. The detail is unparalleled. Look, you can see some of these starting to come alive. It's dusk. But it all goes back to the fact that one of these buildings is posing as a bicycle shop. So you've got these bicycle wheels. Oh, I love it, I love it. Here in Asia, outside of the Feathered Friends in Flight Theater, you will notice these beautiful lanterns and garland hanging. These are actually celebrating Diwali, uh, which is a Hindu festival of lights that takes place during the fall. So these beautiful, gosh, they are so stunning. I can barely speak <laughs> words right now. Um, all of the flowers and the lanterns and the bright colors, they look especially incredible at night, are celebrating that, which I think is really fun that Disney's doing, you know, it's all about Christmas, but there's a lot of other celebrations this time of year as well. So I, I love seeing that they're doing something a little bit different. And this area at night, it is, it is something. It is gorgeous. And 
bonus, I was feeling big vibes over at the lights for Diwali and there was a musician there. And I knew they had brought back some of the drummers in Africa, which warms my heart so much, but I didn't know they had brought a live musician into Asia. That was a nice surprise. So I love that live music is coming back. Arnold literally begged me to watch Kite Tales. So we're taking a break from Christmas to do that. He's so excited. Look at the joy on his face. He knows it's the real star of Animal Kingdom. Arnold loved Kite Tales as much as I do, didn't you? And he was truly amazed by the Mufasa balloon kite taking off and crashing. So come see Kite Tales, it's amazing. Made it to Dinoland USA, where first things first before we can talk about Christmas. Can I just point out that Primeval World has been officially torn down and I know this wasn't the most popular ride of all, but this was one of my favorites just because I did my CP there. So fond memories here. I met some of my favorite people in the world right here. But they do go all out here in Dino Land, starting with this handsome fella right here. Instead of being a snowman, it's a snow duck because, as you may know, Dino Land has Donald's Dino Bash. Donald found out that birds are related to dinosaurs, so he threw a whole party to celebrate. Uh, and so therefore, the snowman here is a duck. One thing they had last year was they had stockings that were made by the characters to each other because this is where a lot of character meet and greets were. So like Scrooge had a stocking, Launchpad McQuack had a stocking, Chip and Dale, Donald Daisy, they all had really cute homemade stockings that I don't see hung probably because they're not out right now. Um, but they do have all of these kind of very old school looking decorations along the path here. They remind me of driving through my family's, uh, lives in a small town in Iowa, and these are what you see like on the light posts in all the little towns on the main streets. It's also that time of year where I have to tell a story from my college program many, many years ago. We were so excited that we were getting Christmas background music. They were like, Christmas BGM starts tomorrow, and we were all like, yes! And then it was Alvin and the Chipmunks. And I had to listen to um, All I Want For Christmas is My Two Front Teeth. And I want a hippopotamus for Christmas like 78,000 times every day for like two months. So glad the kids these days get Kelly Clarkson though. That's fair. Over here at Restaurant Asaurus, you can see the college students that live above the restaurant made their own garland that features plastic dinosaurs. And then up on the rooftop, click, 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 I found jolly old Saint Nick. And coming into Dino Land from this side, they deck out the huge dinosaur here. I want to say it's a Brontosaurus, Brachiosaurus, one of those tall sauruses, Vegiosaurus as they call it in Jurassic Park. Um, but they deck him out with Christmas lights and even a little Santa face up at the top. We've made it back to Discovery Island. I waited to talk about the decor here because it is so phenomenal at dusk and at night. It's breathtaking. They have these incredible lumieries along the rooftops of different Arctic animals. You've got the reindeer and the Arctic fox and a little squirrel here and an owl and they light up and they are just like so incredibly gorgeous. This garland is amazing um, and this is Oh, it's jaw-droppingly beautiful. I also want to highlight these ornaments, or I'm sorry, these uh, snowflakes right here outside Riverside uh, Depot. These are really special because they are made by uh, adults at the Augusta Training Shop in Georgia. Um, and that is a, um, it's a not-for-profit organization that uh, employs uh, adults with disabilities like autism and it teaches them how to do hands-on skills and so these snowflakes were actually made by some of those uh, adults in Georgia and so I think that's really special that Disney included those in part of their decor. Like, I mean it's just so beautiful. You've got statues like this bird here illuminated as well and just incredible garland and Disney does the holidays truly wonderfully, but I I really love Animal Kingdom's holiday spirit. It just is, it's cozy and warm and it it's 
untraditional, but it's, oh, I love it. Along with the beacon of magic in this park, which is of course the Tree of Life, which comes alive for the 50th anniversary, they've brought back the Tree of Life Awakenings, which are these short little projections on the Tree of Life at night, and they rotate a few different stories. But they have special holiday ones that feature, once again, these holiday winter animals, like the fox, um, and a baby deer seeing snow for the first time. And they are just so sweet and such a wonderful way to end your day in Animal Kingdom. I forgot that one of these stories is about a fox who wants to decorate his house for Christmas, but like he can't reach things like the bear can and, and the birds are flying around making pretty things with yarn and he can't fly. So he goes home and he's all alone and he curls up all sad in his burrow and then he wakes up because all the other animals have come to help him decorate his house. <laughs> it's too much for me. It's just so perfect um there are three short stories and they come on every like five minutes there's a reindeer one where the animals all see snow and then at the end the reindeer has a subtle nod to rudolph there's the fox one that breaks my spirit and but also then brings me joy of of a thousand christmas snowflakes and then there is one about a bunny um, and an owl and a bear that go see the northern lights. No, a deer, an owl, and a bear that goes to the northern lights. But they're only like a three or four minutes long each, and they happen like every five minutes. And they are beautiful, so I definitely recommend checking them out if you're in Animal Kingdom. And it's gorgeous here at night. Gorgeous. My favorite things that happens at Disney Springs has returned for the holidays, and that is the Christmas tree stroll. So they used to do the tree trail all over by the marketplace, and it was one condensed area that everybody would walk through. But last year and this year, they've decided to spread it out so you will find these gorgeous and intricately decorated and themed Christmas trees all over Disney Springs, and you can stroll through the whole area and find these different trees. There's a Toy Story tree, there's a Lion King tree, there's a Haunted Mansion tree. So this is a really fun thing, and Disney Springs is free to visit, so you can come here, get yourself some holiday trees, stroll around and look at all these amazing trees. So this is really fun and I love this. So uh, without further ado, roll that beautiful tree montage. listed on here. I went to City Works down at the west side um, and they're listed on here. Chicken Guy, Planet Hollywood, Under Armour. If you go one of there you can get this map with the stickers. Put the stickers where the trees go as you find them. Bring it back to one of those locations and you get a prize. I love a prize. And again, this is free. Also on the back, coupons for various places at Disney Springs. So I kicked it up a notch. What of my favorite things to do at the holidays is back again this year and that's visit Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar which has been magically turned in to Jock Lindsay's Holiday Bar. They have taken Jock Lindsay's, one of my favorite lounges in Walt Disney World, and turned it into a tacky Christmas bar. So they've got holiday decor all over the place, they've got little elves hiding everywhere, and they've got holiday food and drinks that are really cute and really fun. And it's just like, this is always one of my favorite places to come and it just kicks it up a notch when there's a little holiday fun at it. At it. I love looking at all the decor, like this wreath right here has got planes on it and wine corks. If you look on the shelves, every single shelf has like a Christmas tree or a Santa or some kind of bobble. There's tons of that really brightly colored garland everywhere. I especially like over here on the bar. You can see that they've got postcards along the bar of places they've visited, that Jock's visited. Um, if you're not familiar with this lounge, it's at Disney Springs, and it is an Indiana Jones-themed bar named after Indiana Jones' pilot, Jock Lindsay. So there's touches of that throughout it. Um, and I just look at this. I just love walking around and looking at all these knickknacks. There's a couple 
sneaky elves hanging out. Presents up here. I just love it. I think this is so fun. They started doing it a few years ago, and I think it is just like, this is always one of my favorite lounges to come to. Again, like I said, they've got great food and fun cocktails, and now they have tacky Christmas decorations, which makes it even better. Over by the Lost and Found, they've got a couple of little items as well, including a Mickey made out of gear, some other elves. I love looking at the Lost and Found though, because here's one of the Easter eggs, the Indiana Jones Easter eggs. That medallion right there, you may recognize that from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's the thing that connects to the staff that the, the, the bad Nazi holds onto and it burns into his hand. Uh, there's a good Indiana Jonesy strike for you. Just so fun, and I was lucky enough to score the best table in the house, which is this table right here. Uh, this is the very cool sub table because it looks like this like crazy sub spaceship thing that you can go into, and they've even decorated it in here. They've got the little elf right here, and they've got garland and everything hanging in here. So this is my office for right now, and this fun. Check out my Ho Ho Holiday Haul from Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. So this is all of the specialty holiday food that they have, and it is oh so cute. Um, it is like I love this. I love that they do this. I think it's so fun. Um, but talking about everything, these are Grandma's favorite sliders. So these are venison sliders, actually. Um, this is the holiday mule. It's a cranberry gin mule. These are the um, crispy fried Brussels sprouts with bacon and a bacon vinaigrette. I love Brussels sprouts and bacon, so I'm excited about those. These are the C9 light deviled eggs, so look, they look like Christmas lights, which is oh so cute. Um, this, rounding out our savories, is their holiday ham and brie flatbread. And then they've got two desserts. They've got a naughty and a nice, they're calling them. Um, so the naughty is the lump of coal dessert, so they're cookies and cream ganache. And then and they had a very dramatic reveal, which I was here for. And then they also have the cookies and milk. So these are assorted cookies and then coquito um, to drink. And then last but not least, they've got the Clausmo here, which is a holiday Cosmo, and it's actually shimmery. Once again, this is the Yule Mule, which is a very fun name. It's um, Bombay Sapphire Gin, Cranberry Juice, Rosemary Simple Syrup, a sprig of rosemary there, lime juice, and ginger beer. So a fun holiday twist on a classic um, cocktail there. And then they also have the Clausmo, which is literally glittery, which I always appreciate. Um, it's Absolute Citron, Contrail, Lime Juice, Cranberry Juice, and then that shimmer and edible glitter up around the rim as well. Um, first up, the Yule Mule. Ooh! Now, I love a Moscow Mule. Um, no surprise to anyone because they're not sweet drinks. The ginger always curbs the sweetness. You can definitely taste the rosemary and you can definitely smell the rosemary because it's like in my nostril, basically. But besides that, the strongest flavor, I would say, is definitely the ginger. And then you get that kind of evergreen flavor from both the gin and the rosemary. So I think that's really good. It's not that different than a regular uh, Moscow Mule. So if you like a Moscow Mule, I definitely think you'll like that. And it's festive and I love these cups. Here's my Clausno. Still the one I prefer of the two different holiday drinks here just because I like Cosmos more than Mules because they've got that sweetness, but they've also got a little bit of tartness. They're not super sweet, but they always make me feel fancy. And this one is a good Cosmo and it's bonus points for being glittery. Here are those amazingly adorable C9 light deviled eggs. So they have actually uh, tobacco caviar on them as well as shrimp. And then they're deviled eggs and they're matching the Christmas colors there. So they look like Christmas lights. I love deviled eggs when they are at my family's Christmas events. They, so my one of my cousins literally makes like, I don't know, four or five dozen of them and they are gone throughout the day. But they don't have shrimps on them. Oh, that is a delicious deviled egg. I actually like the shrimp on it. I didn't think I would, um, but the creamy deviled egg part is perfect. It's got a little bit of seasoning, not a ton of paprika, which is the flavor I normally associate with deviled eggs, but you can definitely taste the mayonnaise and the egg and the mustard in there. Um, and then the shrimp adds just kind of a nice grill flavor to it. It's not overwhelmingly powerful, um, but I think it's fun to add the shrimp on there. And these are so cute. So definitely a winner in my book. Here we have that holiday flatbread. I am probably most excited to eat this. Um, it's got ham, brie, grainy and apples, pomegranate seeds, and watercress on it. And their flatbreads here are really good. Plus I love brie on anything. My expectations were high, but they were not too high. That brie tastes amazing. That brie is coming through nice and strong. The apples are crisp and tart. And then you got the salty ham, a little crunch from the watercress and the pomegranate seeds. This is delightful. 
fried Brussels sprouts. Never going to be mad about that. Um, they are crispy fried Brussels sprouts with applewood bacon and a bacon vinaigrette. And then we also have, don't forget, Grandma's favorite sliders. These are venison sausage patties, arugula, tomato, and a cranberry ole on house-made bun. Brussels sprouts up next. Again, I love Brussels sprouts. I love them even more when they're fried and covered in bacon fat, I'll tell you that. Obviously, you have to like Brussels sprouts to enjoy this, but they're very good Brussels sprouts. I wish the bacon flavor was a little stronger, actually. They're, the bacon doesn't overpower the Brussels sprouts, and I would like to taste more of, like, smoky bacon. They're really good, though. Um, the best Brussels sprouts are still over at Polite Pig, in my opinion. Those whiskey caramel Brussels sprouts are to die for, but these are very good. So if you want a vegetable while you're at Jock Lindsay's and you like Brussels, they're great. I'm trying to sink my chompers in one of these venison sliders. It's falling apart everywhere. I cut it in half this so you can see the inside. Have I ever had venison? Yes. Mm. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like that because venison can be kind of gamey, um, but I really like the cranberry aioli. It's still not, a, not beef, which is my preferred slider. So I don't know if I would order these again just because I prefer the taste of beef or pork um, over deer. Oh dear. Um, but I like that cranberry. I like the, the bun is great. The, the relish is nice. And the, the meat is cooked well. It's nice and smoky. It's not overwhelmingly gamey. Um, so if you like venison or you want to try something different, I think you'll enjoy these. Just for me, I would rather go with like the flatbread again or the um, eggs over this, but it's still not bad. The lumps of coal. This is the naughty part of the naughty and nice desserts, which I think is a very adorable thing they're saying. Um, so these are cookies and cream, little ganaches, and then there's a dunking sauce as well for those. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's like cinnamon icing, but it's, but it's like made of the filling of an Oreo. Rich, but so good. Definitely strong cookies and cream flavor, but really good quality chocolate on the outside as well. So it's even chocolatier than a normal like Oreo. Really liked that frosting. These are definitely something you're gonna want to have a friend to eat because you get five lumps of coal. How cute is this milk and cookies? So this is a gingerbread sandwich cookie. These are red velvet caramel cookies. And then this one is a pistachio raspberry cookie. And like I said, it comes with coquito, which is a Puerto Rican alcoholic beverage. It's delicious, but you can get it subbed with uh, milk if you don't drink or you've got kids with you and it's gonna be a little bit less expensive. So that's really fun. Ooh, it's so good. You can taste the rum and the cinnamon. Um, it kind of reminds me of eggnog, but not really, I guess just texture wise. Um, but it's really cinnamony and rum y. And, oof, yeah, that's great. So we're going to try the pistachio raspberry cookie first. The pistachio flavor is not super strong. It tastes more like a shortbread. I think it's just pistachio shortbread. But the raspberry comes through nicely. It reminds me a little bit of like a Linzer cookie. Next up, I'm gonna dunk in the um, red velvet and caramel one. I'm gonna just try it first. Mm. Definitely chocolatey from that red velvet. Not overwhelming caramel, it's really nice actually. It's just the gingerbread sandwich cookie. That one is for sure the winner. It's nice and soft and gooey and it's got that cinnamony, ginger, nutmeg, those seasonings. It's even glittery. It's not overwhelmingly sweet. It's more of those holiday spices. I think the cookies and milk wins for me over the two desserts. I love cookies. They're my favorite kind of dessert. And so the fact that you get to try three different cookies and you get the little dipping plus the presentation is really cute. For me, that is the winner. So if you're going to come to Jack Lindsay's, my recommendations would be either the cocktails were good, the brie, the eggs, and the cookies were my favorites. Another very festive, arguably the most festive thing you can do in Disney Springs is meet the man of the hour. Santa Claus himself is here. You can meet Santa Claus at Once Upon a Toy and they're actually using a virtual queue system. When you get over to Once Upon a Toy, which is over in the marketplace side, just scan the QR code, follow the instructions on screen, and it will give you an estimated time. Then it'll let you know when it's your turn to come visit Santa Claus and you can
can get all of your pictures and have a great time letting the big guy know what you'd like for Christmas. I love this option as opposed to waiting in line like you had to do for so many years because that way you can shop and eat and have a great time um, as opposed to waiting in line and then just go one over that way back uh, over that way when it's your turn. There is another incredible gingerbread display in the Beach Club. It is this incredible gingerbread carousel. They do this every year with a different theme. All the horses have a different theme and this year is a little fishy. Let's take a look at this list. It's got this is the 21st year of the Yacht and Beach Bakery. Um, it's got 432 pounds of honey, 1,200 pounds of flour, 100 pounds of eggs, 25 pounds of spices, 10 pounds of simple syrup, 200 pounds of icing, 10 quarts of egg whites, 100 pounds of confectioner sugar, 50 pounds of dark chocolate, 50 pounds of modeling chocolate, 200 gum paste flowers, and 20 pounds of Grand Marnier syrup. Lots of enthusiasm, energy, and talent. 2,020 pieces of gingerbread and 21 hidden gold Mickeys. Can you find them? Wow. This is incredible. So as you can tell, it's Little Mermaid themed. So each of the horses is themed after a different character from Little Mermaid. Like you can see the red hair over there. That's Ariel's, of course. Here's Prince Eric's. But you know, I don't think they would do, They, I don't think they'd have the audacity to put a villain on a Christmas display. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a nice holiday time. It's about family. It's about coming together. Um, um, what? This is the audacity. The audacity. Look at that. Why? Why? Anyway, that's the scariest horse I've ever seen. Except for she's kind of fabulous with that red lip. Um, and then last but not least, you've got King Triton over here. And then Sebastian has one on the other side. These are so cool. The detail in this is incredible. And it's got, look up at the top, it's got the little 50th decal on it. And then Ariel's all the way up at the top as well. I was actually here this morning and I saw them installing it, literally attaching the shingles piece by piece with frosting. Absolutely amazing. Here's Sebastian and Flounder's horse. So fun. But let's try to find some of these hidden Mickeys. Now they said they're the gold ones. So that means all those brown Mickeys down there don't count. I have to look for gold painted hidden Mickeys. Okay, well there's one right there on the leg of King Triton's horse. Two, one on the bridle. There's three on Ariel's horse's ankle, four on the front right there. Okay, I'm not going to find them all because I don't want to give it away in case you're coming to see this, but this is a really fun game and such an incredible display of talent from this bakery team. But that's not all. There's not just this incredible display. There's also treats and cookies and deliciousness. So if you come over this way, they actually set up an annual little shop thing like they do at the Grand Floridian as well, where you can get different treats. Um, including Rice Krispie treats decorated like characters. You can get peppermint bark, you can get ginger cookies, you can get a Mickey gingerbread made out of the same gingerbread as the display. Snowman cake pop. What is this? Why? Why? Um, and a couple other treats here are available for you, but between me and you, the best holiday treat at the Beach Club is inside the marketplace at the cooler. Let's go get it. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the Oreo bonbons from the Beach Club Marketplace. These are an iconic Beach Club dessert that they've had around for many, many years, and then they disappeared, and then they've come back, and they'll come back seasonally in different colors. As you can see, they're red and green for Christmas. They'll come back in Easter and pastels, and they are truly an iconic dessert that's been around for a long time, but not a lot of people know about it. You can find them in the Beach Club Marketplace right now, um, so they're not out at the gingerbread display. You're gonna have to go on a little mission for them because these babies need to stay cool until you're about to eat them cut one open so you could see it um, but these babies are an oreo and then they've got this like cookies and cream mousse cake thing on the top and then a little bit of chocolate mm. 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 okay obviously you have to like oreo it's like a trifly mousse um, on top of an actual oreo cookie they are so simple and so delicious these are a treat anytime i get these it's not a really jelly-like consistency like some mousses are. It's a little bit thicker than that, like a custard. And of course you've got a nice Oreo. Must like cookies and cream, which I do. 10 out of 10. Ho, ho, ho from Hollywood Studios. We've made it over to this park to see what they've got cooking for the holidays. Besides their gorgeous decor we're gonna check out, they've got a Santa cavalcade. They also have the return of the Sunset Seasons greetings on Sunset Boulevard, where they do the projections on Tower of Terror, and it's really wonderful and magical. So we're gonna check all of that out as we continue this best of the holidays. First of all, we gotta talk about the decorations as you enter the park. Sunset Boulevard with the stars going all the way down it and 
Hollywood Boulevard here where you've got the garland overhead. It's absolutely gorgeous at night as all Christmas decorations are. It's very classic, it's very classy, it's very like Hollywood 1940s, the silver tinsel and the tinsel stars and everything. So it's really pretty, but this is not the main event when it comes to holiday decor in this park. Before we go look at the main event for decor, I love looking at the, these are just so retro to me with the bright colors. I love the pink poinsettias. I love the blue and the pink ornaments. Over here in Echo Lake is definitely the best of the decor. It's again, continuing that vintage vibes. Like look at these vintage poodles right here. They look like porcelain poodles that like your grandmother might have. And over here in Echo Lake is where they have the big tree and it is absolutely gorgeous. Like, I don't want to say it's the best one, but it's really good. I don't actually think I could pick. If you told me to pick between the four parks, main trees, how dare you, first of all. I just want all the trees. Max and Goofy are fishing. They found a boot. It's so cute. Oh, they don't want the boot. That's not a Christmas present. That's not what you want to fish for. Doesn't even fit Max's foot. More goofies. Anyway, we're being distracted. But look out at this gorgeous lake right here, Echo Lake. I love that they put these gigantic ornaments floating around. They've got this massive, incredible, beautiful Christmas tree. It's especially, especially amazing at night. And don't forget Santa Gertie. They put a hat on Gertie the dinosaur, which is just so cute. You want to cry. One thing I've always loved in Hollywood Studios when it comes to decor are these little mini trees that they put on the lampposts. But one thing that's always concerned me is right over here. How do you feel about these? Are these adorable? Or are these a nightmare that could come to life and haunt us all? Hmm. We may never know, but please cast your vote, cute or creepy, in the comments. As a fun treat for the holiday season, Santa is back in the Santa cavalcade that rolls down Hollywood Boulevard and then over through Echo Lake. You can actually see the times in My Disney Experience, which is great, so you can now guarantee when you're going to see Santa, and I'm waiting for the next cavalcade and very excited. It's snowing! That's awesome! Cavalcade is super short. It's just uh, some elves and it was Pluto dressed up and a reindeer and then Santa, but it snoped and it was magical and it was really quick, but it was fun. And so if you look at the times and you're available and you're standing along the, the uh, parade route, why not check out a little Santa magic while you're in Hollywood Studios? But I would say he's definitely the most magical when you can meet him either at Disney Springs, you can meet him now with a virtual queue, or you can meet him during the Christmas event at Magic one of the often forgotten about holiday delights at Disney's Hollywood Studios is the Olaf's Frozen Adventure takeover of the Frozen sing-along show. So I love the Frozen sing-along show. I think it's very underrated and it's a great about 25 minute or so live show with vocalists, with Anna, with Elsa, where you do sing-alongs to the Frozen music. But at the holiday times, Olaf joins in the fun and they actually include songs from Olaf's Frozen Adventure like Holly Jolly Mary, Very whatever you celebrate, I hope it's the best. I think that's the official name of Olaf's Christmas song, as well as When We're Together with um, Anna and uh, Elsa. So it's a really cute show in general, but it's especially cute when they add in a little holiday magic. So let's go check it out. I have a little holiday surprise for you, for all of you. You do? Surprise! Yeah. Yeah. Merry holly jolly season's greeting to everyone.
The beacon of magic for the 50th anniversary at this park is the Tower of Terror, but that's not the only projections this time of year. They've brought back Sunset Seasons Greetings, which is a very fun projection series on the Tower of Terror. There's a few different stories, and they'll project them on the Tower of Terror, as well as big screens down Sunset Boulevard. It's so much fun, and it's really, really beautiful. So if you're here after dusk, make sure you catch this. I also love, not Christmas-related, the projection shows on the Chinese theater that happen at this park at night. I think those are really underrated. Um, but this is a fun way to have a little holiday magic. So what we're looking at right now, this is the beacon for the 50th. It's absolutely beautiful. I love looking at people up at the Tip Top Club, up at the very top of Tower Terror, having themselves a good time. But as you can see, it is snoping. And if you take a look and pay attention to these projection screens, every few minutes, one of the stories will start. One thing to note is that the Beacon of Magic kicks off at 6.30 and a very friendly cast member told me that every 30 minutes the show restarts. So every 30 minutes it will start with the Beacon of Magic, uh, which is just them talking about the 50th anniversary and doing a little twinkle with this beautiful um, iridescent colors on the Tower of Terror. Then it'll run through the few different holiday projections and then it will reset for photos this way and then start over again on the 30 minutes. So keep that in mind when you're planning out your day. Um, but there's a Muppets one, a Toy Story one, one, a Frozen one, and a Mickey and Minnie one. And they're all really cute, and it snows, and it's magical. And the whole thing only takes like 10, 15 minutes, and it's really nice, and it's just cool. I love when they do the projections like this. Well, friends, that is a wrap on my Best of the Holidays video here in Walt Disney World. I hope you had fun following along. I adore those puppets. I love all the nighttime projections. I had so much fun at Disney's Very Merriest. I love seeing Santa Claus, the trees at Disney Springs. There is so much holiday merriment that you can enjoy when you're here this time of year. And we're not done. We've still got the Festival of the Holidays over at Epcot. A whole video of that is coming out, as well as Quincy and I are going to do a holiday uh, monorail crawl, so we can look forward to that as well and see some more of the decor at and the Christmas trees at the different resorts. So let me know your favorite thing to do in the holidays down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Year Sent. And until next time, I'm Molly, and it's been magical and holly jolly. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.